once again, welcome to Some Good Seeds. Isaiah chapter 43 through 45, 1 Peter chapter 4 are the verses that I'm reading, or the chapters rather, that I'm reading in my daily reading. Uh, chapter 43, verses 1 and 2, two really awesome verses for us to consider. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. These are tremendous promises to Israel. Said in the time frame they are spoken really adds significance to their meaning. Israel has gone through, once again, idolatrous times departing from the true and living God. And in the next chapters, uh, he is going to repeat a theme that he has spoken of oftentimes before. Uh, it goes to the whole issue of taking a stick or a stone and uh, taking the stick and uh, using it to uh, uh, make a fire so that they can cook their food uh, and then carving an image and bowing down before it and worshiping it. Uh, man, it seems to me, will do most anything, even the most uh, ridiculous and, and oftentimes illogical things uh, to avoid worshiping and bowing the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. So in spite of all that, here is a promise from God to the nation of Israel that he will not forsake his people. So uh, the question is then, how do we appropriate that for us today? What, what, does, what does it mean to us in, in this century? Uh, I think there, there's a principle that here that is very clear for us. And that principle is this, God will not forsake his own. That doesn't excuse us from going after other gods who are not gods at all. In fact, it makes us even more accountable. How can we who have experienced his love and his presence forsake that for something that has uh, no substance, that is purely superficial? The good news is, is that if we will turn from those practices, give up our items of worship, we can appropriate this wonderful blessing to our lives. The thing that is, I think that is so important is there may be times when it seems like the water is going to overflow us. Times when it seems like we're going to be burned up in the flame. It's just so hot. Though we've experienced what seems to be the opposite of what this promise is, what these verses declare, we, we just have to view them in light of eternity. When we go through these things, there's the promise of what is to come when we have passed through, passed through all these trials. Trials that Paul says are light and momentary. So once again, it's a matter of perspective. We cannot, we must not expect that there will be no trials. First Peter chapter 4 confirms that very fact. So don't be surprised. We should not be surprised when they come. Uh, rather, we have to prepare our hearts for them by appropriating the promises, the truth of the word of God, reflecting on them, reminding ourselves of them daily, several times throughout the day of the truth of the word of God, so that we can stand firm on that reality. Uh, God is the one who has formed us. He knows us, has appointed these times for us so that we can grow closer to him, so that we understand the dealings of God in our lives, so that we trust him in the midst of what is going on. Amen. I pray the Lord will just give you the strength to call on him and trust him today in the midst of whatever you may be going through. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today, I pray.